Welcome back to PSC Tech Byte. This week I want to talk with you about the SharePoint Online webbooks and about how to create uh, such kind of webbooks using an Azure function in Microsoft Azure. First of all, let me say that uh, a SharePoint Online webbook uh, is a way to be notified of something that happened in a list uh, item of SharePoint Online. Uh, you can use a webbook to get uh, a post action uh, notification. You cannot use uh, a webbook, for example, to create uh, those that were called ING events. So, for example, if you want to be notified of something that is happening, uh, you will still need to use a remote event receiver rather than a webbook. But if it is okay for you to be notified of something that already happened, the webbook is a very good option that you can leverage. The webbooks have been released in January 2017, so nowadays they are fully affordable and completely fully functional, and you can leverage them to create real business solutions that can react to events happening in SharePoint Online lists. Let me explain you the architecture of the webbooks and how you can register a webbook. So, first of all, whenever you want to register a webbook, you will have to make a post request targeting the subscription collection of a target list, which will be the target of your webbook subscription. You will have to provide a bunch of information through a JSON request, which will include, for example, the notification URL of your webbook, which will be the URL of the webbook that will be listening for events notified by SharePoint Online, as well as an expiration date time, which can be up to six months from the date in which you create the subscription. Once you do that, SharePoint Online will make a post request targeting your notification URL and will provide in the query string a validation token argument, which will be a kind of unique value, a one-time password that SharePoint Online will provide to your webbook notification URL. And you will have to give back that validation token to SharePoint Online within no more than five seconds from the initial uh, webbook notification. If you will make it, if you will give it back to SharePoint Online within five seconds or less, your subscription will be created and you will get back a JSON message which will define the subscription ID, the expiration date time of your subscription, and which will remind you the notification URL as well as the target resource ID of your webbook subscription. Once you have defined a subscription, whenever something will happen in the SharePoint Online list that you uh, subscribe for uh, webbooks, you will get a post message to your notification URL. And within the post message, you will get a bunch of information about the subscription ID, the expiration date time, what is the target resource, the tenant ID and the web ID of the resource and stuff like that. So that you will be able to retrieve all the information about the item affected by events through their IDs, through their information. Once you get a notification uh, to your webbook, you will have to give an answer to SharePoint Online again in less than five seconds. And if you will do that, you will have a good score. If you will not, your webbook will have a bad score because it will be a slow webbook. That's why usually it is a good pattern to store the information you get in the post notification within a queue or within any a kind of asynchronous system. And once you have provided the answer back to SharePoint Online, you can process in a background uh, process the information you got uh, from SharePoint Online. Moreover, you can leverage the get changes method that you have in the client side object model to get all of the changes related to the target resource whenever you want to process any event through a webhook. So that in case you missed any of the notifications from SharePoint Online, you will still be able to get them through the get changes method invocation. So let me go to my demo environment and let me show you how you can create an Azure function that will implement a webhook for SharePoint Online. So here we are in SharePoint Online in a site in which we have uh, a countries uh, list and we want to define a webhook uh, targeting this list. So first of all, uh, let me go to Azure and let me show you a, an Azure function which I defined, uh, which will implement the business logic of my uh, webhook. 
As you can see, this one is an Azure function triggered by an HTTP request, uh, and uh, it's a C-sharp based uh, Azure function. Whenever there will be an HTTP request, I will get that request as an HTTP request message as an input for my function, and I will be able to see, first of all, if in the query string uh, I have the validation token uh, uh, parameter, and if that will be the case, I simply need to create a response uh, with a string content, which will be the validation token I just got. And this will be the end shake uh, to set up uh, to register my webhook subscription. On the contrary, if I don't have a validation token, I will log some information just for the sake of uh, enriching the sample. And I will get the content of my request as a string, and I will convert uh, uh, from a JSON serialized object into a fully typed object, the uh, request. In fact, uh, here you can find in the lower area the definition of few types uh, which are JSON serializable, uh, which represent uh, the layout uh, of the request, of the JSON request that my webhook uh, will get from SharePoint Online. If I have uh, one or more not notifications in the uh, request message, I simply process each of them and I simply create a new message in the blob storage queue uh, that I have on Azure in order to do a background processing of those uh, requests, of those messages, to keep my Azure function light and fast and to be able to give back within the uh, five seconds uh, a, an OK response uh, to SharePoint Online. So this Azure function is already running and waiting. So let me go to Fiddler. Here I have my list of countries. If we go into the content of the <coughs> uh, list uh, through the REST APIs of SharePoint Online, we can see this is the countries list. And we can define uh, a subscription uh, targeting the subscriptions endpoint uh, of the list. And in fact, if I execute a GET request for this uh, list of subscription, I see that I don't have any subscription. But if I make a new POST request targeting the collection of subscription, providing, of course, uh, a content of type application JSON, and accepting a response of application JSON, and providing an, a bearer token in the authorization header, I can say, OK, that I want to create a new registration for a webhook for this resource with the notification URL, which will be the one of my Azure function, and with an expired date, which will be in a few uh, days from now. So let me execute this request. And in a matter of two seconds, I will see that I will get back uh, as a JSON response, uh, the registration of my webhook. If I go back to the Azure function, I can see in the log that I got a function request, uh, I got a validation token, and my function is completed and I sent back to SharePoint Online the validation token. Now it's time to go to SharePoint Online and to create a new item in this list. For example, this is a list of countries. Let me create France, uh, which is missing right now in this list. If I create a new item called France, and if I go back to my Azure function, as you can see, I have in the log a function which is triggered by SharePoint Online. I get a specific request, and I can process my notification, and I can add a message to the queue. In fact, if I go to the uh, Azure Storage Explorer tool, I can refresh the content of the target queue, and I can see that I have a message in the queue which is clearly the message defining that I have a specific subscription with a specific client state, uh, with the resource tenant ID, the site, and the web ID I told you before. So it is uh, really easy to manage such kind of request. And from now, I can process this message in the queue with whatever job or uh, function that I like to use uh, to do post-processing in background. And that's it from a development perspective. Of course, you can even play with the APIs. You can see what are the subscription defined. And now you will see that we have uh, one active subscription. And you can even delete the subscription if you like, uh, simply getting the ID of the subscription and making a delete request uh, targeting the collection of subscriptions and providing the ID of your active subscription. At the same time, you can use the syntax that we used before to create a new subscription to refresh an existing subscription so that it will never expire. Or at least when it will be close to expire, you will be able to refresh the registration and keep your uh, webhook and your Azure function running and registered in the list of subscriptions for your list. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week.